you lost me pretty much with, you know, weed killer in your conversation. It was so, um, so intellectual. Uh, one thing I wanted to comment was that I, it just proves to me that during this conference, we talk a lot, a lot of the presenters talk about mechanisms. And I think you've proved to all of us that there's so many mechanisms that we don't understand or how they interact and so forth. And it's very important. And the question I have is, um, since you know all this stuff, do all of the people that are making decisions for food and farming and all that, do they know these same facts and they're just not uh, wanting to believe mm -hmm. them? Uh, good question. Yeah, I, uh, I wish I understood, you know, whether the folks at, at Monsanto and at Bayer, uh, those people who are trying so hard to keep their chemical going, whether they actually believe it's safe or whether they just want us to believe it's safe. I wish I knew the answer to that because uh, it's possible they've been deceived. They've, they're just not wanting to, not, to believe that it's not safe and therefore refusing to acknowledge it. I don't know. I'd love to know that. But to me, it's very obvious. And I think that the research is coming out more and more recently. Papers are coming out left and right in the last few years, ever since Seralini. I think Seralini was a watershed moment when he wrote the paper um, in 2012 that um, got retracted and then got republished, the famous pictures of the mice with the massive mammary tumors. I don't know if you've seen that, but um, kind of went global. And um, he, that was the first time that someone showed that glyphosate at very low levels, chronic exposure throughout the lifespan of a, of a rat would cause a lot of problems. And there was the mammary tumors, the kidney disease, liver disease, reproductive issues, you know, all of these things showed up over time. But after the first three months, things didn't look so bad. I mean, you couldn't really tell that there was a problem. So it's a slow kill. That's one thing I think that's caused them to be able to keep it on the market so long, because you have to do your study over a long period of time in order to recognize that there's a problem. And that's because it gets into the proteins and slowly messes them up. Uh, worse and worse over time. And so uh, you can get by with a short-term experiment um, that doesn't reveal the toxicity. In fact, Andre Liu was with us uh, a couple of years ago, last time we were in person. And if anybody wants to look on, on, on the Real Truth About Health YouTube channel, we have archives of that video where he goes into exactly what you just said, Stephanie, but on a much deeper level, if anybody wants to go look at that, um, just happen to remember that off the top of my head. Mike, thanks for the question. Let's go now to Ash. Hi, Ash. Hi, thanks, Stephanie. Great, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, presentation. Can't wait to read your book. Um, I was going to ask about chlorine dioxide as well. So that's great what you've said already. Just to be clear, though, if chlorine dioxide breaks down glyphosate, do we still need to do something to then get it out of the body? You know, like any binders or um, there seems to be a big connection between using it with DMSO. I'm, I'm assuming that's because of the sulfate to help, you know, the liver and whatnot clear it out. And if you know of any connection, I'm down a rabbit hole with thiamine deficiency. Ah. This would be an equally prevalent but hidden uh, epidemic um, and connected with sulfate deficiency and oxalate tech toxicity. So, yeah, I wonder yes. if you that. Thanks. Well, that's interesting that you bring up thiamine because that's one thing I've been studying recently. I've gotten interested in thiamine and thiamine deficiency in particular. And I think it is related to the sulfur problem because um, I, uh, you know, I talk about hydrogen sulfide gas, like the autistic kids have a lot of bloating in, in their gut and they have um, excess hydrogen sulfide gas. They, they have an um, overabundance of desulfovibrio, which is a um, microbe that turn, converts sulfite into hydrogen sulfide gas. And hydrogen sulfide gas actually um, breaks down thiamine. And so you can end up with a thiamine deficiency because the hydrogen sulfide gas in your gut is breaking it down. And the reason why you have the hydrogen sulfide gas is because you can't take the sulfate up to where it needs to go. And I, I have that one slide on the COVID-19 where I showed that pathway that involves the, um, the PAPS synthase, which is, involves uh, combining AT ATP with, um, with sulfate to make a... Uh, Phosphoadenosyl phosphosulfate, it's called PAPS. That is the universal sulfate donor. And the enzyme that makes that, I think, is being suppressed by glyphosate. And then also the enzyme that transfers from that PAPS to another molecule, receptor molecule, to make heparin sulfate, to make cholesterol sulfate, to make vitamin D sulfate, to sulfate tryptophan, all these different uh, biologically active molecules, all of the uh, hormones, these things all get sulfated in transit. And the enzyme that puts the sulfate on 
um, gets disrupted by glyphosate. I think that is a major player in multiple diseases, um, in, and especially in autism. I, the autistic kids have been shown to have, a recent paper showed they had severe suppression of the activity of this uh, sulfotransferase, which is what attaches sulfate to things. And that's also gonna disrupt the ability to clear uh, metabolites that are produced by the microbes that are toxic. And then the body puts a sulfate on there to make them water soluble so they can get released through the kidneys and that's getting disrupted. So you have an inability to make sulfate, which drives sulfite down towards hydrogen sulfide gas, which then can mess up the uh, thiamine, break down thiamine and, and make it deficient. Thanks very much, Stephanie. Uh, now we have Joanna coming in. Hi, Joanna. Hi, hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Uh, I, you know, I really appreciate your work, and I just really want to say, keep at it. I think that interdisciplinary approach that you, that you have to things is really um, adding quite a lot to this field. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick note to Mike. I just wanted to flag that Baum Hudland, uh, a law firm that was involved in California litigation, released a lot of documents showing Monsanto does know and has known about the toxicity of right. glyphosate. Um, I actually, it's funny because I thought I was going to ask you a question to which there was no known answer and you started answering it in the last question. Oh, and my husband who's had, uh, you know, health compromised for various reasons over time, he's um, developed uh, intolerance to uh, cruciferous vegetables, garlic, things ah, like that. There you go. A lot of yes. gas and things like that. And so you were talking about both kind of a, that sulfite gas, um, which seems to be part of the answer and, and, and then the thiamine deficiency. Is there anything else that you might recommend for somebody in the situation? Yeah, I think glyphosate is actually causing an epidemic in sulfur sensitivity. And I have, uh, I discovered it actually when I was telling people you got to eat a lot of salt, you know, sulfur um, sources, sources of sulfur like cruciferous vegetables and onions and garlics. And people would send me emails and say, no, I can't. I have sulfur sulfide sensitivity problem. And I, so I, I discovered it from people who sent me email to share their problems with me. And I started looking into it. And it's, uh, that was early on when I was just, I mean, I was actually concerned about sulfate and autism before I even knew about glyphosate. And it's interesting because once I discovered glyphosate and then I realized that it would disrupt those sulfur maintaining enzymes, then I realized that would be what would be causing the problems that the autistic kids have. And many, many other people, colitis is also connected to deficiencies in the sulfur system. It's so, so important. The sulfate is so amazing with all the things that it does for the body. And when you can't make that work, you just have an enormous number of problems um, every which way you look. And so um, I forgot where I was going with that, but yes, you're, you're right. I think that we have an increased, we have an epidemic in sulfur sensitivity. And I suspect that if people were to be more careful to eat certified organic, they might actually lose their problem. The problem might go away because I think it is connected to the glyphosate. He does eat uh, uh, non-organic wheat bread. So now I have something to tell him. Yeah, the bread, I mean, that's the celiac disease. And I'm absolutely convinced that glyphosate is the primary cause there, uh, glyphosate in the wheat. And wheat is one of the foods that is sprayed with glyphosate right before harvest. And the celiac disease, I, we actually wrote a paper on um, glyphosate and celiac disease showing that the level of glyphosate in the wheat over time matches very well with the rise in celiac disease. Mm. What a, what a special forum when we have a speaker that was featured yesterday is coming on and asking questions of another speaker today. Joanna, <laughs> thanks for joining us today, Joanna. We thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, and thank you, Stephanie. And uh, so let's now go to Alejandro. Hi, Alejandro. Hi. Hi, uh, Stephanie. Thank you for being here with us and for all the work you're doing for humanity. Really appreciate it. Um, so just a couple of things that I wanted to bring to your attention that you might find interesting. So I've been listening to a podcast by um, a scientist named Mike Adams. You might know him. I do know him. Yes. Uh -huh. And so he's been trying to bring a lot of awareness around the, some of the information that you've been talking about, especially for glyphosate and the, the lab that he runs test food for glyphosate. But anyways, right. so <clears throat> he brought up a segment about a researcher named David Ostroff, who's an immunologist from University of Florida. He said he discovered two compounds that keep COVID-19 from replicating. Oh, uh -huh. It was di diphenhydramine, which is the chemical in Benadryl, uh -huh. 
which is an antihistamine, and then lactoferrin from breast milk found in colostrum. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty exotic. Yeah, um, and then the other thing too that I wanted to mention is um, spike uh, uh, things that help keep the the spike protein from attaching to the receptors, mm -hmm. which is uh, black seed and honey, black seed oil and honey, uh -huh. pine tea and star anise. Tea. Yes. Uh -huh. I've heard about that, that uh, idea. Yes. Uh -huh. And then like those have to do with shikimic acid, right? From uh, shikimic, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, shikimic. Interesting. So I you're thinking... just, yeah, I was just, thank you. I was just wondering if you could kind of just maybe talk about those types of things and maybe, you know, other helpful information around that subjects. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a practitioner. I certainly do have practitioner friends who have been trying all of these things. And I think it is true that a lot of these, um, you know, they're really fancy molecules that are produced by plants that are um, that have um, antiviral properties, and um, and people are put, putting together formulations that are based on those. And I think that um, that black seed and the um, several, uh, you know, even just vitamin C and zinc. I mean, some basic things that people are recommending, and of course. Uh, 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 sulfur containing amino acids like N acetylcysteine and S adenosylmethionine to take sulfur supplements. I think sulfur is really crucial because that's what's causing the immune cells to be weak. The immune system is, is impaired by glyphosate. I have a whole chapter in my book on glyphosate and the innate immune system. And I think it's being destroyed really by glyphosate. And so when people don't have a good, strong innate immune system, they have to draw in the adaptive system too much, and they end up with all these, you know, the cytokine storm and all these reactive um, inflammation, inflammatory response that injures the lungs and causes a cascade downward. Um, it's a consequence of a, of a broken innate immune system, which in part is due to the destruction of the mitochondria because of the of the deuterium problem. I really think the deuterium problem is central. I was so um, tickled when I found out that um, the favoproteins played such a critical role in maintaining low deuterium because I already knew um, that glyphosate disrupts the favoproteins. And so that just made so much sense. I didn't hear about deuterium until December, 2019. And I immediately jumped on it because it just seemed so perfect with respect to the, what glyphosate is doing to disrupt enzymes that are critically needed to maintain the, the low deuterium in the mitochondria. Mm -hmm.